Good morning, dear students. I'm Professor Amr Abrook, Professor of Plastic and Maxillofacial Surgery. Today, we are going to talk about congenital craniofacial anomalies. The intended learning outcomes by the end of this lecture, you should be able to understand the embryology of craniofacial region, understand the cleft lip and palate pathogenesis and management, enumerate other craniofacial anomalies. And this is a case of a patient introduced to us where he has got a cleft lip. Sometimes we are exposed with patients like this where his mother has delivered him full term after 12 hours of uneventful labor. The infant was found to have a cleft lip and palate. How should the care for this infant be done and his mother to do? B. A team approach is required. A pediatrician, a surgeon, an oromaxillofacial surgeon, a dentist, an ENT, a psychiatrist, a speech therapy, and nurse coordinator. It's the most common congenital malformation of the head and neck, and the second most common overall, behind club foot. There is syndromic cleft lip and palate, which is associated with more than 300 malformations, like Pierre Robin sequence, stretcher columns, trismus 13, 18, and 21, Apertz, Stickler, and Wardenburg. Where else non syndromic left lip and palate diagnosis by exclusion? Isolated cleft palate genetically distinct from isolated cleft lip and palate, the same among all ethnic groups, one for every 2,000, where for male to female ratio it's one to two. Whereas isolated cleft lip and palate is different among ethnic groups, the American Indians, 3.6 per 1,000, male to female, two to one, the Asians, three per every 1,000, male to female, two to one, and the African American, 0.3, per 1,000 and male to female ratio 2 to 1. Where in birth defects we have different definitions. Malformations, it's alterations in normal development. Deformations, abnormal mechanical force on an otherwise normal fetus. Disruptions, disruption of an otherwise normal developmental process. For the embryology, we'll talk about primary versus secondary palate, which is divided by the incisive foramen, where the primary palate develops at the fourth to fifth week, and the secondary palate develops by the eighth to ninth week. The primary palate is a mesodermal proliferation of the frontonasal and maxillary processes, never a cleft in normal development. Whereas the secondary palate, it's the medial ingrowth of lateral maxillary with midline fusion. Always a cleft in normal development, if we have got microglossia, micrognathia, may provide anatomical barriers to fusion. For the classifications, we have VO classification and OA classification, a variation of VO classification, where VO we have got class one, which is isolated soft palate cleft, and class two, isolated hard and soft palate, and class three, unilateral cleft lip, and class four, bilateral cleft lip. For complete clefts, absence of any connection with extension into the nose, where the vomer is exposed as well. In complete clefts, the midline attachment may be only mucosal. Example, the submucose, submucous cleft, midline diastasis, hard palate notch, and vivid uvula. And this is a slide showing the embryonic period and the fetal period, where the major morphological abnormalities occur between the third and the seventh week, whereas the physiological defects and minor morphological abnormalities occurs between the eighth and till full term. And here's a slide showing highly sensitive periods of development, where most between the fifth and the ninth week affects the limbs, the teeth, the palate, and external genitalia. 
Most common craniofacial anomalies and malformations like cleft lip with or without cleft palate or isolated cleft palate. Cleft lip and cleft palate differs with respect to embryology, etiology, candidate genes, associated abnormalities, and recurrent risk. Here's a diagram showing the anatomy of the lip, where the lips show the cubit's bow, and maxilla, primary and secondary palate, soft palate, alveolus, maxillary tuberosity, and hamulus. The palatal muscles, primarily the superior constrictor, it's the primary sphincter, the tensor villi palati, it tenses the palate, and levator villi palati, and elevates the palate and dilates the ostachian tube, and the salpingopharyngeus muscle, palatopharyngeus, palatoglossus, which have got minor contribution. And here is a slide showing that case of cleft lip from starting from minor until severe form of cleft lip. The cleft anatomy in lateral cleft, lip and alveolus, there is lack of mesodermal proliferation and the cleft of the orbicularis, medial portion to coleomella, lateral portion to alanizae, cleft of the alveolus. We have got alveolar, which needs later alveolar bone graft. Here's the anatomy of the cleft, which shows the nose and where the lower lateral cartilage of the nose is flattened and rotated downwards with a short columella and a pivot tip. In cases of bilateral cleft, we have got the, lay, the lip, the alveolus, and the nose. There is duplication of a unilateral defect, either premaxilla, orbicularis to alar cartilage bilaterally, pivot tip of the nose, and extremely short columella. Clefts of the primary heart palate, alveolus, cleft alveolus always associated with cleft lip, where cleft lip not necessarily associated with cleft alveolus. By definition, there is an opening in the nose. Clefts of secondary palate is due to the failure of medial growth of the maxilla at the fusion and the incisive foramen, where there may be microglossia submucus versus complete cleft palate should be identified and the vomer bone. Cleft lip is more common than cleft palate and varies by ethnicity. It's higher in the American Indians and Asians. It's every one to 500 new bones and low in American blacks where it's one for every 2000 bones and intermediate in Caucasians where it's one for every thousand new bones. Isolated cleft palate occurs only in every one to 2,500 new bones and doesn't display variation by ethnicity. For the cleft lip, a complete closure at 35 days post conception, seven weeks from the last menstrual period. Lateral nasal, medial nasal, and maxillary mesodermal processes merge. Failure of closure can produce unilateral, bilateral, or median lap clifting. Left side unilateral cleft is the most common. The clip lift severity, it may be mild involving only the lip, and it may extend into the palate and mid face, thereby affecting the nose the forehead, the eyes, and the brain.